What is up guys and welcome back to another Ray Cello Legends video with me, The Real Deal. Um, today we are going to be doing Nekmothar versus Hydra on hard. Um, it's an easy one key and he can also do, you know, if you've got the other champions, I'm sure you could do Brutal and Nightmare with him as well. Really cool champion. Um, he's recently been added to the game and there was, um, if you could pull 10 Sacreds, you'd get him as a guaranteed champion. Um, aesthetically, he just looks so cool, like proper badass. Um, loving the details and you know it's got this really cool sort of shield but it does look like a spanking paddle to be honest you know he looks like he's a bit of a frat boy this iguana he knows how to party and uh got some very uh questionable green liquids in there as well but anyway let's have a quick look at his kit and then we'll do like a run and i'll talk you through why he's so good and i'll sort of show you my team comp as well so he's got a speed aura as well so that's going to speed up the whole team. Passive, his turn meter is constantly increasing each time a debuff um, is removed, transferred or expired from him. So that's going to keep him fast. Um, and that's going to pair up really nicely. There's um, a mastery in the support tree that basically when your debuffs expire, that also increases your speed. So he's just going to be so fast. He's just constantly going to just be running, you know, running full pelt. Um, he also increases our speed and he has a big boy version of uh, increasing our turn meter by 30% and it grants him an extra chance uh, turn sorry this guy he just does it all and you know we only looked at his passive aura and a3 his a2 so this really helps as well he attacks all enemies and decreases their speed by 30% and it's a hundred percent chance of placing that and he's throwing out leech as well so that's going to help you know if you've got AoE hitters in there, that's going to keep their HP top really nicely as well. And then his A1 um, does a decrease attack as well. So that's really good for Hydra as well, especially for the Head of Wrath. So that's going to help reduce the damage that he does to us as well. So great, great champion. Okay, so this is my uh, Necmo. So we've got double perception and speed. So we want a decent amount of speed on him. Um, so we've got 268. I could definitely actually push that up a little bit higher. Um, I've not glyphed him up yet. Um, I'm running, running real low on those uh, speed glyphs. But yeah, I could easily probably get him to about mm, 290, I reckon, with speed glyphs. So 290, that is going to be fast. Um, and the faster he is, the faster your team is, and the slower the Hydra heads are going to be as well. Um, so we've got a decent amount of uh, HP on him, 53k HP, uh, 2.8 um, defense, um, crit rate and crit damage we're not really interested in. And then we've got um, 380 accuracy as well so we want a decent amount of accuracy on him as well and like I said I've not glyphed him up properly um, so yeah you can definitely get those numbers up higher and accuracy I'd like it to be a bit um, maybe like 400 450 but yeah pretty decent so gloves are HP um, accuracy chest speed boots um, ac I know HP banner uh, defense uh, necklace and then a defense ring um, sub stats we're just looking for speed accuracy hp percentage and defense percentage a little bit of you know it'd be nice if i could get more resistance on him but i just don't have the gear to do that so i'd rather focus on his hp his speed and his accuracy and his defense so masteries we have gone down the support tree we've got accuracy um this mastery is not really important but it was so that we could get um you know so this will basically boost our turn here when uh, the debuffs expire this will increase our um, turn meter when our um, speed um, speed buff um, expires as well or is removed. So basically having those two things, like that's going to help him really be really nice and fast. I, so I chose that over having the accuracy because we've got the accuracy. Um, cycle of magic just to, you know, get us around our abilities. Lasting gift to keep our speed buff up as much as possible. Laura still to increase our accuracy and speed. Then Master Hexer to try and keep that slow debuff and leech out as long as possible. And then we've just gone down offense and we've just, because he's doing AOE damage a lot as well. Um, we've just basically gone, you know, crit rate, crit damage, um, do more damage when um, enemies have got, no, sorry, when we've got um, more uh, max HP. And um, then we're going to do, you know, uh, more damage when those Hydra heads um, HP is below 40. Um, targets have more HP than us, we're going to do 6% more damage to them. And then um, our A1 is basically going to do more damage each time we hit, up to 10%. 
and then because we're doing lots of AOE damage, uh, War Master is going to be great as well. So we get loads of procs off that. So that's going to really help bump up our damage. Um, there's definitely um, different ways you could build him. You could build him in a poison set because he's doing loads of AOE damage. So the heads that can have poison on them, that would help you do more damage. Um, of course, you could build him like if you get like the speed and the HP up, uh, sorry, the accuracy a decent amount, you could go like regen or immortal. But um, I like this build. This is a solid build. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's just get straight into the run and have a look at the team comp. So this is the team. We've got Ugo, Royal Guard, Trunda, Nekmo, Bivald, and Godseeker. Um, so let's talk about Nekmo first because that's why we're all here. Um, so Nekmo is so good for Hydra because it's all about his speed manipulation. So he's keeping our team really fast with that turn meter boost and the speed buffs. But then he's keeping the heads really slow with um, slow. Um, and it's such a powerful debuff because it means we're getting more turns in. We're going to be doing more damage. Um, also, like, for example, if you put on block debuffs, that is going to stay on the heads longer. So poison clouds not going to be an issue. Um, and it just means that and any other debuffs that you throw out like um, provoke that's really useful on head of mischief. Um, no, so the head of cleansing, that is going to slow that down as well. So you, there's more chance of landing that provoke as well. So it's just so, so useful. And um, the other thing that's really great about it is when you drop um, a Hydra head and you're going to do more bonus damage to it, if you throw a slow on it, it means that you can do more damage to that head because it's going to take longer for it to recover and pop back up again. So that is why Nekmo is so good. Um, and Nekmo can be replaced. Um, basically, Nekmo is doing the same job that Lady Kimmy and Michelle does. Um, I don't think there's any really other champions that can do the sort of role that these guys are doing. But that's why they're so good for Hydra. Um, so yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll talk you about what each champion is doing and what role they have in the team comp. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to put down below... Um, all the stats of the champions as well so you can copy completely carbon copy my team if you want to so i'll do the stats below and the masteries um but yeah so obviously we've got ugo in there who's um you know just a great champion all round uh decreased defense and uh block debuffs and basically pairs up really nice with uh bivald because no sorry bivald because uh, bivald is going to basically provoke so that's going to stop the head of cleansing and stop those poison clouds so they pair up really nicely together. Royal Guard and Trunda are my nukers, and I love them both so much. They are so good for Hydra. Um, I definitely think that I prefer them over um, HP Burn Champions. Um, of course, there's exceptions like, for example, Sissia is a great HP Burn Champion, and so is Geomancer. But I feel like the other ones, they're good, um, but they sort of their damage is quite slow and with Royal Guard and Trunda you can sort of control their burst. So for example, say Trunda gets uh, eaten, then you can just like time your Royal Guard's AoE damage, that, you know, that A2 that absolutely slams and you, you're just going to smack that Hydra head and it's just going to pop out the, you know, they're just going to pop out and they go back to putting in work again for you. So I definitely, I've definitely found that for, for this team comp, having, um, AoE Nukas definitely does more for your buck. Um, so, yeah, and then obviously you've talked about Nekmo, and then Godseeker, not the best reviver, but they do do a lot for the team. So they're doing heals, um, they're doing revives, and they also reduce cooldowns as well. And you can actually, my Godseeker is built for uh, Bommel, but you can um, actually put some accuracy on Godseeker. So if anyone does manage to sneak in, you know, if one of those Hydra heads does sneak in a buff, you can remove it. There's a chance of uh, decreasing the turn on that as well. So uh, Godseeker can do a lot for you. So really solid champion right there. And uh, my uh, Bivald, um, I love Bivald. Um, basically how I do use him is I start off with the A2 to definitely get a provoke. And then if their um, head of cleansing is still provoked, then I'll use the A3 for a bit of healing and AoE damage, and I've got mine in a top kick set, so he's constantly throwing out poisons throughout the fight on the whole team, so it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, so let's talk about some alternatives as well. Ugo, so um, she can be replaced by any block debuff champion. 
Um, I'd rather have that block debuff than the decreased defense, um, just because it's so useful um, on these heads and stop them being so annoying. Um, the only thing I would say though is that Ugo is definitely best in her class for this role. Um, but there's still some other great champions as well. You know, you've got Kantra, Lady Kimmy, Mortu, uh, Lady Kimmy as well. So just go back to her. very similar to Nekmo. She's very fast, going to keep the team fast and block debuffs. So she's doing lots of jobs. And that's that's the champions you want for Hydra. Champions that are going to try and fill as many roles as possible. Um, so we've got Mortu, uh, Umbral, uh, Warcaster could be an option as well. I've not tried him personally, but he does do block damage. So on this rotation, he could be really useful. Um, Nukas, you could go double royal guards, um, husk, um, any champion that basically does max enemy damage is a great option. Um, CC is great as well. And you could use AoE burners, but I just personally feel that I'd rather have, you know, these nukas that can just come out of the woodwork and just absolutely slam and drop those heads when you need them to. Uh, Bivald um, can be replaced by any um, a, a provoke champion. Um, but um, I do really like him and he's an awesome champion for Hydra so I don't really I wouldn't really want to replace him with anyone else but I mean you could use Seeker Seeker could be a good option um, so for God Seeker obviously you've got Duchess who's just like an absolute beast for this um, some people do use Arbiter um, but I'm not so keen because she doesn't do any healing and if she dies she's not going to be able to revive anyone oh, actually she does a bit of healing but she's not a proper healer um, but she does have a good revive though, saying that. Um, Blind, Blind Seer is a great option. Um, Gorgorab, I've, I've not actually tried it myself, but I think people have overlooked that. And, you know, Gorgorab um, can boost turn meter and he can do healing. You know, I just put him like in a mortal or regen set and have him about 250 speed. So he's nice and fast. Um, so he can do AOE revives as well. So Gorgorab, potentially a really good option, I think, personally. Um, I'm actually going to sort of test that out because I reckon he would be actually a decent option. And um, Ursula, I think Ursula and Rector Draft are champions that everyone knows about, but they are all great options. So um, with this team comp, there's only one real weakness, and that's actually the Head of Wrath. So um, basically you want the Head of Wrath, basically once you've killed it, um, so basically you're not going to, basically how this team works is you want to focus the Head of Cleansing first and only the Head of Cleansing. And because you're doing a lot of AoE damage, you are going to slowly pick off all the other heads and hope that the Head of Wrath doesn't come back. So we, the Head of Wrath is the only thing that's going to cause us problems. Um, head of Fear, basically because we don't have any way to really deal with him, you just want to basically not focus that head and avoid it. Um, say um, your Trunder's got Fear on them. Um, what I would do is I would do my AoE, uh, my A1 first. So in case the fear does proc and then do my A2 or my A3 and do your big damage then. So that way um, you don't get feared and you don't waste your big damage moves. Um, so yeah, that's the fear head. And then head of uh, cleanse it. Uh, so the head of mischief's not going to cause you any problems because steals any buffs. They're going to be blocked the entire time and you're going to keep him nice and slow. So he doesn't matter. Um, head of poison doesn't really cause you too many problems. Um, you know, um, Ugo can cleanse that and you're going to keep, you know, you're going to keep the head of poison slow because, you know, you're going to have that slow debuff on them all the time and that poison cloud not really going to affect you either. And you can heal through it with Godseeker. So it's not going to cause you any problems. And the head of uh, cleansing is just going to be completely, uh, you know, under your thumb the entire time because you're going to be provoking them. And um, I can't remember what the uh, sixth head is called, um, but that's not going to cause you any issues. You know, that is just, you know, because you've got the block debuffs, they're not going to put ally protection out or reflect damage. So they're not going to cause any problems and they're just going to slowly die. And actually, it's quite a good head to stay out. You don't really want it to die. You want it to stay out because it's a really easy head to deal with. So it's not going to cause you any issues. So that is pretty much the team comp and everything. Um, so let's... Um, just look at um, some screenshots quickly. So as you can see, um, we managed to one key Hydra, uh, Hydra hard in 62 turns. So that is good going, my friend. That is good going. Um, and it does say 22 minutes. Actually, um, I had to swap trains. I was playing on my phone when I was doing this. And also um, I was chatting in global chat as well. So it was probably more around 15 minutes. So 15 minutes to one key Hydra hard. 
that is good going. You know, you can't complain about that. And we managed to do a whopping 33.4 uh, million damage in total on Hydra Hard. Um, Royal Guard coming in clutch. Um, absolutely bringing down the Smackdown at 13.3 million damage. Trunda lagging behind at 10 mil. But, you know, Trun um, I, you know Trunda was doing some good stuff here. Um, Necmo as well and uh, Bivald, you know, both doing 3 million damage as well. So that's really helping us. And I think I got to about 168 turns as well. So that's a decent amount of turnage. Uh, so good survivability from this team comp. So, yeah, really pleased with that. And uh, the other thing I wanted to do is just look at some of my teammates as well in my clan who have also pumped out some big numbers on Hydra. Oh my god, someone has let a Sith Lord into the clan and they have managed to bang out 53 mil on Hydra hard. Um, Sith, you are an absolute beast. Well done, my friend. I salute you. Um, but as you can see, he's got Chris, Lady Kimmy and Duchess who are really like sort of the key components of this team comp. They bring so much to the table, you know, Chris bringing out slows, decreased defense, uh, Duchess is, and also he's got provoke, sorry. Um, Duchess obviously revives, block um, debuffs, and then Lady Kimmy with that speed manipulation and block debuffs. So they are like the core of that team. So really solid team comp. Me coming in second at 33 mil, uh, only, only a 20 mil difference between us. But uh, yeah, well done, as I said before. Um, and then we've got P1 doing 31 mil damage with this team comp. Um, and there's some more um, different team comps below from Jedi and Ziftar and uh, P off. So yeah, if you, you know, there's some different team comps there. So well done guys for, you know, hitting Hydra this week. Um, Brutal got P1 coming in at 46 mil. Wow, what an absolute beast. Um, but yeah, as you can see, once again, that Duchess, Krisk and Lady Kimmy comp coming in and doing a lot of work for him. But yeah, so that is pretty much the end of the video. Um, I can't think of anything else to say. Um, but yeah, if you've got any, you know, um, interesting um, Hydra team comps or anything slightly different, you know, please, please, please DM me or drop me a comment. And I'd love to know, you know, what you guys are doing. But anyway, uh, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.